And Leon's here with us now, Leon Hendricks. Very good morning to you. Uh, morning, morning, Charlie. We were just looking at that thinking, when might that have been? Could you put a date on that? Do you know uh, when? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a bit of a blur. It feels like yesterday, but it's been 43 years. It might have been in, uh, I'm not quite sure. There's so many concerts I've been to with him and so many pictures I've seen. Uh, I usually don't look at the backgrounds and, you know, figure it out. But Tell you me, know, you know where it's at? For, no, no, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm we'll not try sure. and find out for you. The oh. documentary is going to give people an insight into, into uh, Jimmy, your brother. Uh -huh. Now, presumably, as a brother, your memories are going to be and your thoughts about him are going to be very, very different from all of us who you know have a sort of image of who he was and what he was uh, like. Exactly. And what, so, what were those? Take, take, take us right back when, when he was little. <laughs> okay, back in 1942. No, I'm, I'm playing. But anyway, uh, when he was little, he was. Uh, he was like five years older than I was. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm about five years old. He might be ten. And uh, he's starting to tinker around with stuff. He listened to the radio. And, you know, he took it apart one day to look for it, the music. You know, in them days, he only had 40 songs in all America. It's called the Top 40. And, and so he literally took a radio and he thought the music was inside it, so he had to take it apart to find it. Yeah, he was looking. He was searching. And then... Uh, uh, and then my dad came home and got upset, and he said, why did you take the reader apart? And Jimmy said, I was looking for the music, because I can hear it. But where is it coming from, you know? Uh, my dad said, New York City, and uh, what's that place called, New York City? Uh, Radio City Hall. Yeah. Okay, that's where the top 40 was made. Okay. Oh, you want me to... No, but I was, and at that stage, so he has interest in music, that's listening to it. Uh -huh. Did he show a very early talent with the guitar? We were talking about a ukulele there. Well, he, uh, he heard music, but did he, didn't, he didn't have a vehicle or mm. instrument to, you know, to bring it to earth. And so one day, me and my dad and Jimmy were working in this lady's garage, cleaning it out for her, and he found this ukulele with one string on it. And... Uh, he start plucking around with it and playing simple songs. He can, he play a whole song on one string, and then he tune it down to another note, tune it up to a note, and uh, he was able to play like uh, with Elvis Presley and Chuck Berry, and uh, let me see who else did he like, Buddy Holly, and uh, you know very simple. And then finally he got a guitar, a really raggedy one, uh, didn't have a pickup on it. Mm -hmm. And it was really uh, bad, so he went to Sears and Roebuck, got a, a pickup, you know, out of the catalog, taped it on the guitar, tried to put a couple of screws. He wasn't too mechanical, okay, uh, but he was uh, musical, so uh, he had wires hanging down and duct tape. And that just didn't matter. He did things with the guitar. I mean, he just mm -hmm. he changed the way people play guitars, didn't uh -huh. he? Yes. They still haven't caught on yet. <laughs> What was the thing, do you think? Because we saw some of his performances there, and it's, it's still, you know, it, it, it's a unique way. He, he, his whole performance on stage is really unique. Mm -hmm. still, still people use him as a kind of a, a, an icon or an inspiration, don't they? Well, the reason it came about was because um, uh, he was in the middle of black world and white world, you know, so he kind of put them together, the soul music and the rock music together with the clothing and the personality and was able to come up with this unique style. You know, he was very timid and soft-spoken mm -hmm. offstage. He only went crazy on stage. Mm -hmm. 